We must not doubt him if we desire to make it down the pathway to glory. Do you understand today what it means to put your complete trust in the Lord? Now we read responsibly today from the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel, where we read from the 13th verse down through the 27th verse. That was again the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel where we read from the 13th verse down through the 27th verse. In that passage of scripture, we saw where Jesus, he spoke to what it meant for one to put their complete trust in him. In this passage of scripture, we saw a verse that I referenced at the start of this series there in the 13th verse where we saw Jesus encouraged for us to enter in at the narrow gate. Yeah, we know that the narrow gate, we know that that is the path that is less taken. We know that that is a path that, that is dark. We know that there, that is a path that is filled with many obstacles. It's filled with many things that can make it difficult for us to travel down the path. And again, we know that it is best when we are going down that path, it is best for Jesus to be at the lead and it is best for us to follow his lead. Now, something that we see there in the 15th verse is that Jesus, he warned, he said, beware of false prophets, beware of false teachers, beware of false leaders. Jesus said there in that verse, he said that they are like ravenous. They are like greedy wolves. Wolves, they are pack animals. They travel in packs. They look to take advantage of their prey. When the numbers are in their favor, they will then go on attack. They will take advantage of their prey. They will destroy their prey. That's what Jesus likes in false prophets too. They will take advantage of those that will listen to them they will lead them to their destruction. Which leads me to my key verses for today. My key verses for today, they're in that seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel, will be the 24th and the 25th verse. That again is the 24th and the 25th verse there. Those two verses will serve as my key verses. If we are looking at that, let us say amen. Amen. We'll see that the scripture there reads, it says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. We'll see there that the 25th verse, it reads, and it says there, and the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house. We'll see there that Jesus has said it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. Jesus said it did not fall because again, that house, it was founded on the rock. Amen. Now, from those two verses, I want to focus on here today for a thought. Obedience is required. Again, my thought for today is obedience is required. I want to put emphasis on the words there in my key verse. Those words where Jesus said, hear and does. Hears and does. We must pay attention to those words there. Whoever hears and does, Jesus said there, obedience. What does it mean to, to be obedient? You know, I think all of us know what this means. I, I believe that, that all of us grew up learning what it meant to, to obey our parents. You know, when mom and dad, when they when they told us to do something, if we stood around long enough and hadn't did something, they would come and say, did you not hear me? 
did you not hear what I said to do? Then why are you not doing it? That's what they would say. You know, that's what obedience is. When they would tell you to do something, you get up and you do it. When they gave you instructions, obedience was you follow those instructions. And so Jesus, again, he said there that one should hear his sayings and that one should do his sayings. So if we know what it means to be obedient, why do we struggle so much to obey God? If we know what it means to be obedient, why are so many of us so stubborn to where we won't listen to God, to where we won't follow his instructions? See, our stubbornness, it gives way to not listening to the Lord's instructions. And if you aren't listening to the Lord's instructions, how can you say that you live in obedience to him? This is what I would ask you today. As you have heard me say before, following Christ, that is not an easy task for one to do. We know that very well. Over in the 14th chapter of Luke's gospel, Jesus, he said, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me, Jesus said, they cannot be my disciple. They cannot be my follower. To those that desire to follow Jesus, to those that came to Jesus and said, we will follow you. I will follow you. Jesus, he said to them that if you desire to follow me, think about building a tower. If you build a tower, will you not sit down and first consider the cost to build that tower? What Jesus was explaining to them is that it's costly to follow me. Do you understand that there is a price to pay in order to follow Jesus? Now, when I say that, I'm not saying that it's an expensive ticket that you have to purchase in order to follow Jesus. That's not what I'm talking about. I don't want anybody to think that I'm talking about having money in order to follow Jesus. There are many people today that think that it takes putting money in the collection plate to follow Jesus. That's not what I'm talking about. You don't have to put money in the collection plate to be saved. But there is a price to pay in order for one to follow Jesus. Jesus said that there is a sacrifice. You must bear your cross to follow him. That sacrifice, I want you to understand today that it is not a sacrifice of your flesh. It's not a sacrifice of your blood. It's not the sacrifice of animals. It's not the sacrifice of of any grains. It's not the sacrifice of any of those things. See, if you love to say that you trust Christ, Jesus, he again said there in my key verse that you must hear and that you must do. Simply put, Jesus said that you must obey his every word if you say that you are going to follow him. Do you think that you can give your obedience to Christ, but you don't again, listen to any of his words? Jesus said that you must obey his every word to follow him. That is the sacrifice that we must pay our obedience. I say to you today that you cannot say that you trust the Lord, but don't follow his instructions. I say to you today that you can't say that you're following Christ, but you don't obey him. 
We must obey the Lord today in order to follow him. Again, I say to you today that your obedience is required. We're in the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel where my key verses for today was the 24th and the 25th verse. So how do we go about obeying the Lord? Jesus, he tells us there the first step that we must take. The first step that we must take is we must hear his sayings. Now, I want to point out that there is a drastic difference between one who hears and one who is attentive to understand, one who listens to understand. There is a drastic difference, I want you to understand today, between one who pays attention and one who simply is there to hear. We must listen to God's voice. Are you listening to the Lord's voice today in order for you to obey his instructions is what I would ask you today. Now, some of us, we may say, well, I've never heard God's voice before. I don't know what God sounds like. Some of us, we may say, well, I try to listen to God but I can't hear him. I, I struggle with, with listening to him. So we may begin to wonder, well, pastor, you are saying that I need to, to listen to God today. Well, help me to be able to listen to, to God. How can I hear God's voice? If that is a question that you have today, join me in turning over to the fifth chapter of first Peter because Peter has a lesson for us to learn today. He has a lesson to teach all of you who desire to hear the voice of the Lord. That again is the fifth chapter of first Peter. When you get there, I want you to take a look at the fifth through the ninth verse. That is what we're going to be taking a look at here for, for just a moment here. We'll see here in this passage of scripture, that Peter, he was speaking about living in submission to the Lord, that is living in obedience. Now to start off this lesson about how we go about being able to listen to the Lord, how we can hear his voice, we'll see that in the fifth verse that Peter, he speaks about two groups of people. He speaks about younger people and he speaks about elders. Now, I want you to understand there that Peter, he wasn't being a grouch. He wasn't being the old man on the corner that says, get off my lawn, you younger folks. Peter wasn't being that, that type of older person here. And he had a lesson to teach. And so we'll see that in that fifth verse that Peter, he said, you younger people submit yourselves to your elders. Now, why was it that Jesus said, you younger people. Why did he decide to use the younger people and the elders here? Well, the younger people were those who were inexperienced. They had not really gone through life. And so because they had not really gone through life, they hadn't learned anything. They don't know anything. Whereas in comparison to the elders, the elders, they had lived life, right? Elders, they had gone through some things. And so because they had gone through some things, because they had lived life, they had gained some knowledge, right? They had gained some wisdom. They had learned some lessons that they could teach to the younger people, right? And so, you know, younger people, they should have been listening to the elders. It reminds me of when I was a child growing up. You know, when we were children growing up, while we may have been running back and forth at, at 100 miles per hour, when we did finally sit down and our parents would teach us, our ears would be open to, to what it was that they had to say. We would learn from them. We would learn our rights and our wrongs. We will learn how to be obedient 
to what it was that they said. It was only when we reached that age to where we thought that we were grown, that was only when we would start not listening to them. You know, when, when we reached that age where we thought we were grown, when we was just, what, 12, 13 years old, and we thought we was something, we thought that we were grown, you know, we, we thought that we knew everything. And, 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 and we began to say, I don't have to listen to what mama and daddy is saying. Now, I, I done lived some. I done lived my little 10 years. I done, I done lived my little 11 years. I done made it through elementary school. So I know some things, mama. I know some things, daddy. You ain't got to tell me anything else anymore. I'm ready to take on life. Ignorance, right? And we ended up having to learn lessons the hard way because we were hard headed. Lessons that mama and daddy was trying to skip us over. We had to now go through. And so we'll see there in that same verse that Peter, he called on all people to be clothed with humility. Be humble, Peter says there. See, in order for one to learn, one has to listen. And in order for one to be able to listen, they can't be like how we were when we were teen teenagers, when we thought that we knew everything. In order for us to listen, Peter says that we have to, to be humble. Which leads to Peter saying there, he says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. If you desire to listen to God today, if you desire to hear his voice, the first thing that you must do is you must humble yourself. Scripture says there, Peter said there that Again, the Lord resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You see, you cannot be filled with pride and be able to hear from the Lord. You see, the prideful person will never hear from God. The prideful person will never be able to hear God's voice. In fact, the prideful person will never turn to the Lord to hear his voice because the prideful person does not think that they need God. You see, some of us, we are foolish enough to think that God actually needs us. Some of us are foolish enough to think that God is begging for us to love him. Some of us, we are foolish enough to think that we have something that God needs from us. We think that God needs our worship. Some of us, we, we think that God needs our praise. Some of us think that God needs for us to come to church every Sunday. But I tell you today that God does not need you as you think. God, he doesn't need your worship. God, he doesn't need your praise. God doesn't need your prayers. God doesn't need your love. We must let go of our pride and our ego. If we want to hear from God, if we want to be able to listen to God, the first thing that you must do today is get rid of your pride and your ego. You see, I want you to understand today, God, he does not need to love you. God wants to love you. There is a difference there, and I hope you understand that. You see, it's the other way around. God doesn't need us, but we need him. 
I want you to understand today. God does not need you. You need him. God, he is already holy and righteous. You are a sinner. And you cannot make yourself holy and righteous. But guess who can? So again, I say to you today that you need the Lord. In order for you to go down the path to glory, we said that we're on the path to glory. You cannot make it down that pathway by yourself. You cannot make it over those obstacles that try to hinder you down that narrow and dark path. You can't make it over those obstacles by yourself, by your own strength, by your own might. You need help. And though you may turn to me for your help, there are times where my strength can't help lift up that log that's in the road for you. Our strength together combined can't lift up that log. We need help. In our help today, I tell you that it comes from the Lord. So again, as Peter said there in that sixth verse, let us again, as I have referenced earlier in this series, let us humble ourselves under the mighty hand of the Lord so that we can receive his word so that we can hear his voice. Now, once we begin to hear the voice of the Lord, once we can hear his sayings, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden we are being obedient. Again, there in my key verse there in the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel in, in the 24th verse. Jesus, he tells us what our next step is to take in order for us to, to be obedient. Jesus, he says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does and does you have to hear and do. You see, that's where the obedience part kicks in. As I mentioned at the start of, of my sermon here today, we can't be like how we were when I was a little child, when mom and dad would say to do something, and I decided that I was going to keep sitting at the TV and keep playing the video game or keep watching TV. The last thing that I needed was for me to hear my dad coming up the steps and to peek his head around the room and say, boy, didn't I tell you to do something? I didn't need to hear that. I needed to simply get up and do. Because my dad coming and saying, boy, did I, did, didn't I tell you to do something? That made me jump out of my socks. I knew that I was in trouble. So again, in order for us to be obedient, we must hear, we must hear from the Lord and then we must do. You see, your obedience will keep you aligned with Christ. Your obedience will not only keep you aligned with Christ, but your obedience will keep you aligned with the will of God. And, and the will of God is that for everyone to be saved. The will of God is for everyone to have everlasting life, to be risen up at the last day and to enter into his heavenly kingdom. That is the will of God. And I say to you today that we should desire to be aligned within that will. Again, I don't know about you today, but I desire to make it down the path to glory. I desire to make it to glory. I desire to enter into the kingdom of heaven, into the kingdom of God. The only way that I can do that is by being obedient. I must be obedient to his word. God, he gave us his word with the intent for us to live by his word and not ignore it. Did you hear me there? 
God gave you his word for you to live by it, not to neglect it, not to disregard it, not to ignore it. God's word is not intended to lead to a mechanical response. It is not intended to lead to a mechanical action. I don't know if you hear me here today, but hear this. One of the biggest problems in the church today is dull hearing. Many of us have gone dull to the word of God. Many of us have gone dull to the voice of God. What I mean by that is that the word of God, it demands action. The word of God demands action. But again, many of us today, we are taking very little action. Many of us today, we aren't responding to the word of God as we should. We are responding to his instructions as we should. We are, in other words, following his instructions as we should. I don't know if you hear me here today. And so because of dull hearing, there is little growth today. There is little growth in our hearts today where our hearts should always be growing in the word of God so that we can bear fruit that is holy and righteous. Our hearts should always be changing as we go down the path to glory, leaving that, that corruptible for what is incorruptible. I don't know if you hear me here today. Now, this was an issue that James, he wrote on in his letter. In the first chapter of James, the 22nd through the 25th verse, James, he encouraged for us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. James, he said that be doers. He said that it is imperative for you to do the word of God. See, James, he understood the importance of doing, not simply just hearing. Some of us, we simply try to read the word of God. We try to read it for knowledge. And I want you to understand there is nothing wrong with reading the word of God for knowledge. It is a good thing to read the word of God to gain some knowledge. However, I want you to understand as well again today, that the word of God demands a response. The word of God, it demands an action. The word of God, it demands obedience. Are you being obedient to the word of God today? Now, one of the issues that we have today is something that James wrote in the 23rd and 24th verse in the first chapter there where James, he said, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, James said that he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. He observes himself. He goes away, but then he immediately forgets what kind of man he was. You see, there are many of us today who go to church. We sit in, in the pews of the church. We sit in the chairs of the church. We listen to the Sunday school lesson and we hear the words of the preacher, don't we? But many go to church as a sinner. They hear the Sunday school lesson. They hear the sermon. They then get up at the end of church. They go out of the church and they leave still being a sinner. I don't know if you heard me. See, the word of God, it didn't do anything for them. And the reason why the word of God didn't do anything for them is because it went in one ear and not in the other ear. They, they weren't attentive to the word. They could not listen to the word. They could not understand the word. They could not understand God's voice. There will be many that will hear this message today and it will go in one ear and not the other ear. 
because again, they are not of the spirit as we saw in our Sunday school lesson for today. There are many that pick up a Bible and again, they read the Bible. Again, there ain't nothing wrong with that. But it goes wrong when reading the Bible doesn't sit in your heart. When, when that word hasn't did anything in your heart. I love what my niece shared with me earlier this week. She was reading the book of Revelation. And I could tell that it was sitting with her. She said, I don't want to, I don't want any of what that's talking about what's going to happen when them trumpets blow. I don't want that. If you are attentive to God's voice, his word, it will dwell, it will dwell in you. If you are attentive to his voice, you will then live according to the word. It will make you move and you will, you will move. This is how we obey the word of God. We humble ourselves. We humble ourselves. We listen to him attentively and then we move accordingly. Are you listening to the voice of God today? Can you hear his voice? James, he said that those who look into the perfect law of liberty and continue in it here and do once again, James said that they will be blessed. Yeah. Are you attentive to the word of God? Are you listening? And are you doing? Are you moving accordingly today? It is again, a must for us to listen and do your obedience is required. If you desire to make it down the path to glory. Again, there in the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel, Jesus, he continued to lay out the importance of obeying God's voice. Again, we see there in the 21st verse that Jesus, he said, once again, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. However, those who do, once again, hear and do, listen and do, be attentive and move accordingly. Jesus said that those who do the will of his father in heaven will enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, without obedience, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Without obedience, you cannot make it down the pathway to glory. It is impossible. It cannot be done. Now we'll see here a warning that we must take to heart here that speaks even more to why we need to obey God's voice. Take a look there at the 25th and the 27th verse for me. In both of those verses there, we'll, we'll see Jesus. He speaks of a couple of things there, doesn't he? Now, the first thing that we will notice Jesus speak of in both the 25th and the 27th verse there is of a mighty storm. We see that mighty storm there. He said that the storm, it had heavy rain. I know it was heavy rain because I see flood waters mentioned there. And it had to be heavy rain there as well because there was gusty wind. Some severe weather, right? Now, the second thing that we'll notice there in, in both of those verses that Jesus spoke of were two houses. We'll see that there were two houses that was trying to endure that storm. They had the, the heavy rain, the, the floods, and had the gusty wind. Now we will see in between both of those verses that only one of the houses was able to endure the storm. 
Why was only one of the houses able to endure the mighty storm? Why was only one of the houses able to remain standing while the other one fell over? Well, Jesus there in those verses, he pointed to their foundations. We will see there. He said that one of the houses, hey, it was built on the rock while the other house was built on sand. Now, for all of us Bible readers, this scripture is very familiar to us, isn't it? We know this one very well, don't we? So we should already know the moral of this story, don't we? In this lesson, the houses, the foundations, the mighty storm, they serve as representative. They are representatives. So what is it that is being represented here? I'll tell you, well, life is being represented for one thing. There in my key verse, there in that 24th verse, Jesus, he said that those who hear his sayings and does them, again, those who are obedient, Jesus, he said that they are like wise men. They are wise people, Jesus said there. So again, let's be clear here about this. If you live in obedience to the word of God, if you do your best to live in obedience to the word of God, Jesus, he said that you are wise. And most importantly, Jesus said there that the wise, you, if you obey his word, you are that one that builds your home you build your house, you build your dwelling place, you build it on that rock. And that rock, thank you, Sister Horton, that rock, it represents a strong foundation, doesn't it? And that strong foundation, we should understand is, we should know is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus, it is his sayings, and his sayings is the divine truth. The truth, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson today, it will not only set you free, but the truth, it will keep you upright in the mightiest of the storms that you face in your life. Paul, he said that there is no better foundation one can lay than Christ. If you choose to make the rock of Christ, if you choose to make the rock of Christ your foundation, if you choose to make the rock of Christ the foundation that you are going to build your house on, that you are going to build your dwelling place on, I tell you today that you made a good choice. On the path to glory, you will face storms and it is best for you to have a strong foundation so that those storms don't blow you off course so they don't knock you off track because again, our goal is for heaven. It is for glory and we don't need anything to knock us off track. See, those storms, they represent a whole bunch of things that we go through, don't we? We go through, we have many storms, don't we? We have our trials, we have our tribulations, we have our afflictions, we have our infirmities. We have all of it, you know? Well, we always be talking about bills, but that deals with money. But we have our health, don't we? We have all of those worries, those things that, that pop up. They seem like they pop up out of nowhere. That we can't just get them off of our mind. They bug us so much. They grieve us in our soul. Trials, tribulations, these storms, they can be quite devastating for us. Which again... You can't battle those storms alone. You cannot make it through those storms on your own. You need help to make it through those storms. And I'm telling you today, I ain't enough help for you. 
Everybody always want to turn to the pastor. We can help you through some things, but there's some things we can't help you through. And that's just the truth. You need the Lord. You need Christ. As for that other house that we see there, that one that fell down, let us pay attention to why Jesus said it fell down there. Jesus, he tells us that the other house, it fell down because his builders decided that they would build their house. They would build their house on sand. Now, I don't know about y'all, but to me, it sounds rather foolish to build a house on sand. It sounds rather foolish to build a house on, on loose foundation. Now, now, what kind of fool, I will begin to wonder, what kind of fool will build their home, their dwelling place, on top of sand, on top of a loose foundation? Well, I don't have to, I don't have to think that hard on it because Jesus, he tells me, what kind of fool will build their house on sand? He tells me there in the 26th verse that everyone who hears his sayings but does not do them, Jesus said that they are the fool that built their house on the foundation of sand. Now, let us not miss the fact there in that verse that the fool is one who has chosen to do that. There is a rock that they could build on, but they look at that rock and they say, I don't want to build on that rock. Let me go and build on some sand. That's awfully foolish to me. Now, now, if you don't understand what I'm trying to tell you here in this, this thought, I want you to understand today that while one may sin out of ignorance, the true sinner chooses to live in sin. Sin, I want you to understand today, sin, true sin is a choice. Jesus, he again said there, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does not do them. You see, the one who sins out of ignorance, they have an opportunity to be redeemed. They always have an opportunity to say, oh man, I messed up. I shouldn't be building on, on this. Let me go and build on the rock. But those who choose to stay on that foundation that is loose, again, they made the choice. So it's truly a shame for, for one to know of God's word, to know of his instructions, but to then go, I don't need it. It is a tragedy when you have a good foundation that is available to build yourself up on. You are that house as well. It is, it is again, a truly a tragedy to know of the foundation of Christ, but to say, I'm going to go elsewhere. I don't want to build on Christ. Many people are being torn down today because they refuse to be obedient to the word of God. Many of people are being torn apart by their afflictions, by their infirmities, by all that they go through in their trials and their tribulations today because they refuse the Lord. They refuse his word. Now, there will be times where we who are in fellowship with the Lord, where we may struggle in our obedience. There will be times where we who are of fellowship already today, where we may struggle with listening to the Lord. Now, why does that happen? Why do we have those struggles? Again, I am reminded of Peter. I'm reminded of him being in the boat, seeing Jesus walk on water. And I'm reminded of Peter saying, I want to walk on water too. And I'm reminded of Peter getting out of the boat, stepping down on the water, walking on the water for a little bit. And then he fell. I'm reminded of him in that moment, in that moment, because when he was paying attention to Christ, when he was focused on Christ, he was doing well on the water. 
But then the scripture tells us that he got distracted by the wind. And when he took his attention off Christ, that is when he slipped up and fell. Many of us today, we are on the path to glory. We know that we need to be obedient. We know that we need to listen to Christ. But there are a lot of times when the storms of life, when that wind, it starts bumping up against us and start knocking against us, our trials and our tribulations, they seemingly get too heavy for us, don't they? And, and rather than keeping our attention on Christ, Rather than keeping our focus on the Lord, we look at the wind. We, we get hung up on, on our trials. We get hung up on our tribulations. And that's when we begin to stumble. That is when we begin to fall. That is when we slip out of our obedience. We must find a way during those trials, those tribulations, those afflictions that we may have, we must find a way to still be obedient. We must find a way to still listen to the voice of the Lord. This is where Peter once again steps in for us. And he tells us in the ninth verse in the fifth chapter, if you want to turn back over there and just take a look at it, you can. But Peter, he said, resist the devil and be steadfast in faith. He said, resist the devil and be steadfast in faith. You see, we cannot let ourselves get distracted by our trials, our tribulations. We cannot let ourselves get distracted by our, our affirmities, our afflictions, I should say, and our infirmities. We cannot let ourselves get distracted by the devil who likes to pop up when it's storming real bad and, and try to remind us that he's still there. You know, it's storming outside and he come up and knock on the door and say, hey, friend, I'm still here. We, we, we should not give him our attention. We must, again, resist him. We must even resist all of what we are going through and we must be steadfast in our faith. And to help us out in hearing the Lord, we must remember that God said, be still and know that I am God. Be still. In the mightiest of storms, be still. You say that you trust in Christ. In the mightiest of storms, trust in him. Be still. Calm your heart, calm your mind, be still, be at rest. You don't have anything to worry about. You don't have anything to stress about. Know that God is on your side. Remember that Jesus, he has the power to calm storms with his hands. In the mightiest of storms, lean on him. Don't try to lean on, on yourself. Lean on the Lord. In our stillness, I tell you today that it will help us to endure whatever storms come along the way while we travel down this pathway. In the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, in the first verse, Moses he said that those who diligently obey God's voice, he said that they will be above all nations. Moses, he said that the blessings of God will come upon those. It will come up. It will overtake those who obey God's voice, who diligently obey the Lord's voice. Even more, Moses said that God will establish to himself a holy people, a righteous people, those who are again of faith, those who are again of obedience. I want to be established as holy and righteous before the Lord. So again, we must do our best to be obedient today. Now, while Moses shared those words with the children of Israel, I want you to understand that those words, they still ring true for all of us today. And Jesus, he said, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Jesus, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those 
who are humble, Jesus said, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory, it belongs to you. If you obey the voice of God, if you live in obedience, you will make it down that path, as I said. And if you live in obedience, you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. You will pass through those gates and you will dwell with the Lord for everlasting life. Again, is that what you desire? If you desire today, your obedience is required. Amen. 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 Hey there, thanks for watching this week's sermon. I hope that you enjoyed this week's sermon. I hope again that you took something out of this week's sermon that you can apply it to yourself and that you can walk in it, that you can live by faith. Make sure that you share this week's message. Make sure you're sharing it with someone somewhere. And again, I hope that you'll come back for next week's sermon. Make sure that you're following the channel so that you don't miss the next notification for next week's sermon so that you don't miss a notification for the Sunday school lessons, the Bible studies or the food for thoughts as well. Make sure that you're following the channel today.